If you have been struggling trying to find the quickest way to build friendship in The Sims 4 after the team took away our photo bug, then this lot is exactly what you need in your game. Now, there are multiple different reward traits your sims can get that'll give them relationship boosts, but those only help when meeting new people. You can also have your sims do activities with someone like cloud gazing or playing a game, but those can take a long time to build up friendship. The absolute quickest way to make friends in The Sims 4 is by using the tiny home buffs. But what if you don't want to live in a tiny home? Well, I've solved that problem with this tiny home park that utilizes all the lot tricks and hacks that will help you gain relationship as quickly as possible. Let me explain how this all works. Tiny homes give your sims massive boost to relationship gains when your sims either live on the lot or even just visit one. However, if you place a tiny home in your world and just have your sims visit an empty house, there's really nothing for them to do there and no way to take care of their needs without being invited inside the home by a household that lives there. I wanted to create a lot that takes advantage of these tricks, but also is somewhere you'd actually want to spend time and has stuff for your sims to use. So I found a workaround. If I just put everything outside, then your sims don't have to be invited inside in order to make the lot functional. With this in mind, I figured the perfect hack here would be to use the tiny home lot type, but make it into a park. In order to make this work, you have to put down at least four tiles. I didn't want to just plop down a few tiles and move on though. I wanted this to look like an actually nice place to visit. So at the front, I built a pavilion area. This will have some sitting areas and restrooms. So even if the weather is bad, your sims will have a sheltered place to sit and chat as well as restrooms to take care of their needs. I also added in a few lot traits to further boost your relationship gains here. Then throughout the rest of the lot, I put in tons of items that your sims can use to help them build relationship with their soon to be friends. There's a playground and toys for the kids, game tables, picnic area, bonfire, horseshoe pits, and an outdoor movie theater. Tiny homes are also OP for building skills, so there are a few skill building items scattered around like a guitar, some grills, planter boxes, etc. So even if you don't want to make friends, your sims will still want to visit here for the great skill boost. I made sure there were plenty of open walls on this pavilion because if you visit a lot that doesn't have a household member on it to invite you inside, you can't lower the walls. By keeping the amount of full walls minimal, you'll still be able to see and use everything that the game technically considers to be inside. The roof will also stay on, but if you just move your camera close up into the pavilion, the walls and roof will disappear and you'll be able to see everything. You probably noticed that the bathrooms are completely closed in with walls and are like, Liz, you messed up. There will be no way to use those when Sims visit. Don't worry, I play tested this lot and fixed it. I really liked how the stone flooring tied into the gray stonework of the pavilion as well as the red orange color of the roof. However, the size of the pattern didn't line up well with the build, so I made my own. I did this by rotating quarter tiles to make a smaller square pattern that fit the size of the walkways much better. To get quarter tiles, you just have to click the Ctrl and F buttons at the same time. It can be hard to remember all the keyboard shortcuts. I know I don't have them all memorized. So in order to remember this one, I associate it by thinking F is for fraction. So if I want to place a fraction of a tile, oh yeah, that's Ctrl F. Hopefully that little trick helps you remember it too. Whenever I build community lots, I always try to make the bathrooms as functional as possible because the last thing you want to do after you load into a lot is have to go back home because your toddler needs to use the potty or your dog rolled in something and got all stinky. So in each of these bathrooms, besides the toilet and sink, I also added in a bathtub and toddler potty. Yes, it's a bit odd to have these in a public restroom, but I am telling you, you will be grateful to have them when you bring your sims here. So you're welcome. Speaking of little ones, I did also add in some toys for infants, toddlers, and pets on this lot, so you won't have to worry about keeping them occupied. I also put in a pet food bowl and scratching post, so the entire household will be taken care of here. I really struggled to decide what I wanted to do on this patio. First, I was going to put a few games tables, but I ended up making a separate games area under a few trellises elsewhere on the lot. Then I considered putting picnic tables, but I moved those too so that there could be a larger picnic area on the left with some grills and a food stall. 
I also tried putting in a little tree landscape thing, but that just seemed like a waste of the space. So I ended up tearing that down later. Eventually I figured it out and ended up making a little public garden thing here. I put in a few vertical planters and planter boxes so your sims can practice their gardening skill or just grab some free harvestables while they're here. I also included a couple chess tables too since they are smaller than the other games tables and are a hands off way to have your sims build friendship together. Alright, let's go a bit off topic to talk about some Sims 4 news and rant about horses for a bit. Surprise, surprise, it seems like the Sims community has mixed feelings about the upcoming Horse Ranch expansion pack. Personally, I'm already feeling disappointed. When it was first leaked that horses may be coming, I wasn't interested in the horses, but I was hopeful that this would be used as a way to bring in some much needed diversity into the game. Since horses are an important part of so many cultures around the world, this pack could have been a good way to add in non-US representation. I was really holding out for a Mongolian or South American focused pack. The only way I figured I'd be okay with another US based world would be if it were centered around Native American representation and maybe set in a plains or prairie style world since we don't already have one like this. As we all know now, this didn't quite come to fruition. Instead, we'll be getting yet another American Southwest style world. Like really Sims team, this will be our third world like this. There are so many biomes and regions in the US that aren't represented and they could have chosen from any of those if they were so hellbent on giving us another US pack. It would have been way better in my opinion if this pack were set literally anywhere else in the world, but another Southwest pack, no thanks. I'm happy to see that they've worked with at least one indigenous person on this to include some representation from those cultures. I am a bit wary though. It's only mentioned in like one small blurb and I haven't seen much emphasis put on this in any way in any of the other promo stuff. So it doesn't seem like this collab will be a driving force behind the pack and I'm worried it's going to be very superficial. Hopefully I'm wrong because native representation in this game and in the US culture at large is way overdue. So yeah, I'm not excited about horses and I'm feeling a bit disappointed already. I am very interested in the goats, though I wish they and the sheep were full sized and included in cottage living. Nectar making also sounds cool, but could have come an eco lifestyle with juice fizzing. Overall, I'm probably not going to rush out to buy this one, but that's just me. How are you feeling about this pack? Are you excited, disappointed, indifferent? Let's discuss in the comments. Okay, rant over, let's get back to the build. I made a sidewalk area at the front of the lot to attempt to give it some more realism and blend it into the street. There's a community bulletin board up here cause parks always seem to have one of those at the entrance. I also put in a busking station and guitar. Another way you can gain friendship is by mentoring another sim in things like fitness or piano. So I figured maybe you could try doing that here too. The busking station I added as a bonus way to make some simoleons while you're here. I also used the Better Build Buy mod from Twisted Mexi to find extra details to add out here like some newspaper stands, mail drop box, and signage. This mod makes it so much easier to find and use debug items. This is especially helpful for debug plants, which I use for my landscaping extensively. I swear I cannot build without this mod, so if you'd like to download it for your game too, I'll put a link in the video description. Having your sims sit and watch a movie together seemed like another good way to have your sims passively gain friendship. So at the back of the lot, I put in one of those huge outdoor TVs from movie hangout stuff to create an outdoor theater space. These string lights from City Living tied into the color scheme and added in just a little pizzazz to this area, so I strung those up behind the movie screen. In the front, I spread out a bunch of layered rugs to act as the blankets people may bring to sit on the grass here. They would also make a nice place for your sims to lay while cloud gazing or stargazing. Off camera, I also put down some folding chairs and cushions for people to sit in while watching their movie. We'll see how that all looks in the tour at the end though. Hey, 
if you've made it this far, that probably means you're liking this video, so why not send a like my way? It's a quick, kind thing to do, and it really helps out, especially for small channels like this. It'll also make me smile, and I know you want to make someone smile today, so go ahead and click the like button. If you've been watching some of my other videos, you've probably noticed that I've built a lot of parks. Yeah, I think this is like my fourth park build that I've shared. What can I say? I guess I'm an outdoorsy bitch, so I like landscaping and building outdoor spaces. In my defense though, the other park I've shared are just variations of the same park, but for each season. So you could consider them to be one build broken into multiple parts. If you also want all the beautiful parks in your game that you can get, or if you miss the festivals from The Sims 3 Seasons, check out my seasonal fairground build series. I'll link the playlist here. Speaking of parks, I'm working on finishing up the landscaping out here. Like I said, I used a bunch of debug for this. Usually what I do is pick out a handful of plants and just layer them in different ways throughout the exterior. This way, even though I add in a ton of landscaping, it doesn't look too overwhelming and it's still all cohesive because it's the same few items just put together in different ways. After this, I did some playtesting off camera to tweak a few things. So let's go ahead and jump into live mode to take a look at the final result. Here we are at Friendship Park with two sims that I'd say are easy to dislike and would most definitely be unlikely friends. Don Lothario and Agnes Crumblebottom. As you can see, they have started off on the wrong foot, but we're gonna fix that. Let me just sit them back here to play a game and start working on improving their relationship while we take a look around. I also brought the family from my daycare build here to help show everything off. At the front, there is a playground on the right for your child and toddler sims. On the left, we have a water balloon bucket as well as a fire pit for your sims to tell some stories and chat around. Moving to the pavilion, as you can see, the roof and walls stay up since we are technically on a residential lot and haven't been invited inside. But you can just zoom in and those will disappear, then you can see and use everything inside. I removed the interior walls of the bathrooms and put up curtains because that's the only way to get these bathrooms to work here. As you can see, they are usable and don't cause any issues with multiple sims in the pavilion. Right off of the pavilion, we have a little community garden on the patio. I planted a bunch of stuff here already so you can use it right away, but you could definitely rip out those plants and have your sims plant whatever you want instead. Over to the side here is the picnic area. There's some grills and a food stand. It won't be automatically tended, but you can just click on it and hire a vendor if you want to use it. Moving to the opposite side, there's a soccer ball sims can kick around together. And there's Agnes and Tom. Looks like things are going well for them. Nice. Keep it up, you two. Make amends. Lastly, we have the outdoor movie theater at the back. I put lots of seating out here and left some open space on the rug too so your sims can have a good spot for cloud or stargazing. Hey, editor me popping in with a note. Now there is a quirk to this lot if you're visiting here without being invited inside. The games tables will say that you don't have permission to use them. Everything else will work even if you're not invited in. So definitely still way better than visiting a normal tiny home lot where everything's inaccessible because it's all inside. If it bothers you though, and you want to work around to be able to use the games tables when you visit, there are two small tweaks you can make to do that. First, just move in a filler household you don't play with into this tiny home lot. I'll grab a sim from my gallery and move them in quickly. Then you'll just need to add in a door. I put a wall and door on one of the bathrooms to act as the front door. The other I left open so it'll still be usable anytime. Now you're all set up so when you come here, you can click on the door to be invited inside. I do not understand why sims can use the grill, TV, garden, etc. when they're not invited in, yet can't sit and play chess, but whatever. Pretty much everything works here regardless of if you're invited inside. And either way you visit, it is still more functional than traveling to an empty tiny lot. Alright, that's the whole build. I'll admit it's a bit odd to have your sims visit a park that's actually a tiny home. 
But hey, we gotta do what we gotta do to hack their relationship system in The Sims since they wrongfully took away our photography bug. Plus, I'm sure you are gonna use this trick anyway. Might as well do it at a more fun and functional lot. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. Let me know what you think of this friendship trick in the comments. Will you use it or is it too weird or OP? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button. It really helps out. I have plenty more builds coming, so if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Remember, be kind to yourself today, and I'll see you next time.